transfer channels. The important points to remember when you are dealing with the trust money. I think you know by now that when you are dealing with the trust money, you need to make sure that the trust money is separated from the business money. So it means if you are running a practice and you usually receive the money from the clients, you need to make sure that the money for the clients are separated from the money that belongs to the business. You can only claim the money from the client's records after you have performed certain services and after you are being entitled to those uh, amounts. The first thing that you can see here, we have got what we say, the trust cash should not be less than the trust creditors. Remember, when you receive money from your clients, like I said, that money must be separated and must be recorded into trust records. So in the trust records, there's an account that we open called, the general ledger account called trust creditor. So a trust creditor is the um, uh, account that is used to record all the amounts which are received from what? From the client. So if the client pays you in advance, you must have an account called trust creditor. For example, if you've got Sylvester, so Sylvester is giving you the money in advance so that you can go and perform for him. So it means you need to open an account uh, for Sylvester as a trust creditor. So that balance must always be a credit. Why? Because you received money from the client in advance. I think you know the word advance. So if I receive something in advance, it means I have just instituted what you call a liability. So that's why all the trust creditors balance must be having a credit balance to show a favorable balance. A trust creditor should not be in debit because the fact that it shows a debit, it means uh, the balance of the client. For example, the money that we got from the client, the client has got a negative balance in his account. So we need to avoid that by all means because by having a debit, we are creating what we call an irregularity. And by rules, we are not allowed to have a trust creditor's balance which has got a debit balance. So it must always have what? A credit balance. Remember, after we've performed as a, practice, as a practitioner, after we've performed your services, remember you do charge a fee. So now that we have performed, it means a client or our client is owing us the fees. We need to make sure that we debit our client, as you can see here, as a trust client, with the fees which we have charged. Remember, the rules of account equation will still come into play. The rules of double entry system will still come to play. So we need to know which accounts to identify. For example, if you charge a fee, the accounts involved will be the fees account, will be VAT, if this VAT implication will also have you having what you call the trust data outline so you must know how to identify those accounts immediately after charging the fees it means that the the the, the client is owing us so we they can ask us to open or to compile what we call the fees channel i think you learned more about the fees channel uh, before or maybe the journals in general for example, we've got different types of journals. We've got the cash book receipts. We've got the cash book payments. We've got the sales journal, the sales returns, the petty cash. All of them are called subsidiary journals. They are called books of first entry. They are called the books of prime entry. So it means those books are used to summarize the transactions according to their nature. For example, all the cash received must go to the cash book receipts. All the cash payments must go to the cash uh, book payments. All the petty cash payments must go to the petty cash. So those journals are used to summarize the transactions according to their nature. So one of those journals is called fees journal. A fees journal is going to be used to charge the fees to the client. Honestly speaking, the fees journal will look similar to the general ledger trust uh, client account because whatever you do under the trust uh, client account if you debit the fees in the general ledger so you are still going to 
do the same in the fees general. So the fees general looks like a general general. I just got a debit and it's got a credit. For me, it's the same thing. It's just that under the fee general, remember the format is different, but we record the same information. But you'll see by the time when we record in the real accounts. Like I said, the trust client account is debited by the fees. In other words, by debiting the client, it means I'm showing the client that now I'm entitled to the fees you owe me. You are my debtor, so you need to come and pay me. So you will see that we are going to debit our trust client account with the fees in the general ledger account. Remember, in the process, we can incur what we call the disbursement expenses or cost. So those costs are incurred by the business on behalf of the client. Remember, we are incurring on the behalf of the client. So for time being, we use our own business bank account. Sometimes they call this business cash book. So we use our own business account to pay for the client. The client is responsible for those expenses. So we're just paying on behalf of the client for time being. That's why we need to make sure that we have to go and debit the trust client account to show that the client is owing us what we paid on their behalf. So this information is very much important, especially when it comes to the transfers, because when you do the transfers, you cannot make mistakes. Remember, rules need to be followed. The most important thing that you need to know is to make sure that you avoid what we call irregularities. Make sure that the trust creditor's balance is always in a credit. It must not be in a debit. But by keeping your records and having ongoing reviews on your records, you can avoid having situations whereby irregularities are instituted. So at the end of the day, make sure that you know how to deal with the books. By the way, this is just the basic stuff around the transfer channel. More information will be shared by the time when we deal with the real accounts. Good luck and I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.